All right, so this is a 2014 Dodge Avenger. A few weeks ago, we put a new battery in it. Um, the battery was getting real weak in it. I had it tested. I tested it, and then I had it tested, and the battery came back pretty weak. And uh, anyway, I put a battery in it. <clears throat> you have to remove the inner wheel and the inner fender well here to get to the battery. I actually have a video on that. Uh, so if you don't know how to remove the battery or where to get the battery on these cars, uh, 2000, this is a Dodge Avenger, the two Chrysler 200s, a lot of them are the journeys, a lot of them are down here uh, in the wheel well. Anyway, I already made a video on that, so I'll put a link to that below. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take the battery loose because uh, the car ran great for a few weeks with the new battery, and then the starter, now the starter's going out. It basically won't even start. Uh, so, uh, the service manual calls to remove the catalytic converter to take the starter out. Now, I've done a bunch of starters on Grand Caravans and uh, the Journey, a few other ones with the 3.6 in it, Chrysler 3.6 V6. And I was able to remove the motor mount and avoid removing the catalytic converter. I haven't actually done a starter on a 3.6 on this body style. I've done some of the 2.4 starters. But never to 3.6, so I don't know if the catalytic converter is shaped differently or closer to the block for whatever reason. I don't know, but I'm going to try my best to avoid removing the catalytic converter because I hate working with exhaust. It's like one of my few pet peeves I have working on cars. It's actually probably my number one pet peeve is exhaust work or exhaust in general. So I'm going to do whatever I can to to avoid to uh, avoid removing that uh, if I can get take that motor mount out uh, like I have in the past on the other body styles uh, I will definitely do that before I remove that cat so we're gonna get out of there and find out together if it's possible to get these out without removing the cat or not on the Dodge Avenger Chrysler 200 style body styles with 3.6 V6 in it so I'm gonna go ahead and take this battery loose so we don't uh, weld anything anytime you take a starter or alternator or something like that off always disconnect your battery and uh, so I'm gonna take that off and then get out of there and figure out what we need and uh, start going to town on it this also has the oil filter housing leaking I don't know if you can see there's some oil right there on the a arms pretty common on these 3.6's um, kinda off the subject but I'm gonna do a video on that when I fix it on this car uh, in the coming weeks so anyway let's get out of there and see what we gotta do all right, I don't even know if you can see it on the camera. That's the starter right there, and you can see the cal converter is right uh, right here. But like I said, uh, this starter is really small on these, and it's very light. Uh, and I've, in the past, have just removed this motor mount here, and have been able to wiggle them out on the Grand Caravan, the other one. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I think they're all 16 millimeter, so... Go ahead, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove it, since I can't really remove it and show you at the same time. I'm just going to go ahead and remove it and then show you afterwards uh, where all the bolts are at. And then we'll just do it like that, because uh, I can't really set you up on the camera under here and get a good shot with, while I'm working on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this mount right here. You can see it's there's a big brace that goes to the back of the car. Sometimes I've I've removed that in the past, just to get it out of the way. I may not do that this time, I may just leave it up there. It just depends on how much it gets in my way. But uh, either way, it's, it comes out real fast with air tools or whatever. So I'm going to remove this mount and I'll show you where all the points are at that it bolts to. And then, uh, and if you, when you remove this, you may want to put a block under the transmission or under the engine. It's not necess necessarily 100%, but uh, may not. All right, so I got that mount out. Uh, Took the bottom out. There's two bolts on the bottom. You got the bolt here, the long one that goes through. Um, and then I took this off. Obviously, there's three bolts, 16 mil, on this. And this is what goes to your engine. And this is uh, the main thing that's in the way. So once you get the, this stuff out, let me take you up there. You can see the starter now. It's right here. And I believe that nut up there, if memory serves, a 13 millimeter. And I think you want to get that loose first. The starter really won't drop down very far without getting that loose. And uh, I use a flex a flex head uh, open end. 
um, to get it off, and I believe it's 13. And then once you get that off, you have two 15s right here on the starter, or well, on the transmission that go into the starter. And then I think we can wiggle it out from here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the 13 flex head uh, open in and get this main battery cable off. And then we'll take these 215 out. There's one more connector on there for the solenoid. Uh, once you pull the starter down, you should be able, if memory serves, you should be able to disconnect that pretty easily. So uh, the main one is the whole hang you up to, to begin with is going to be this main battery cable. So I'm going to go ahead and get those loose, and then I'll bring you back. All right, so uh, got the 13 millimeter. That's your main battery cable. Like I said before, uh, these flex head ratcheting uh, open ends box in are your best friend when it comes to that you can get these right up in there kind of flex it and it takes it right off and this thing is a lifesaver when it comes to these starters uh, then once you get that off pull the cable out you may have to use a screwdriver and kind of pry it off a little bit and then uh, you can take the two 15s off back here there's only two bolts to hold the starter on uh, there's one on the bottom and one here 15 mil once you get those off you may have to take a pry bar or screwdriver and kind of pry the starter off because it sets in there pretty good uh, once that comes loose, you can bring it down far enough to get uh, the electrical connector off right here for your solenoid. And that is uh, just a clip. You just press it's a black clip. You just press on it and pull it off, and it comes right off. So that's all there is to it. So we're going to set the new one up in there and uh, get this thing going. I literally, uh, the book calls for almost three hours to replace the starter, and that's taking the catalytic converter off. It's like 2.7 hours or something like that. Something crazy. And I probably got literally maybe less than 10 minutes into this. So, uh, you know, maybe 30 minutes to do this. If you got, it helps if you got power tools. I was able to use my electric ratchet to get all the bolts out for the motor mount and stuff. So that helps uh, time wise. But uh, anyway, we're going to set the new one up. We'll set the new one up in there. First thing we'll do is put that cable on and tighten this down. Well, actually, the first thing we'll do is plug in this connector, then put the cable on and set it up against the block and put the 215s in it and start uh... alright so it's both the back up you got the 215 mils uh... back in there i got the uh, main battery cable uh... secured 13 mil it's tight solenoids on there uh... the wire so now all we need is to put the motor mount back up and uh... put the battery back up so i'm gonna go ahead and put the motor mount back up uh, bolt it all up and we'll put the start or put the battery cable on and make sure this thing starts and we should be good to go um, so it looks like there's no need at all to uh, remove the cat converter which is good and uh, taking this motor mount in and out should only take you a few minutes maybe five ten minutes at the most so this really isn't that bad of a job at all um, and like I said, this is on a 3.6 V6 uh, Chrysler engine. So I'm going to go ahead and put the motor mount back on, and then we'll start rocking. All right, I got the battery hooked back up, so now I guess it's the moment of truth. See if she'll crank over and start. pretty straightforward job uh, if you've done other starters before this isn't really any more challenging the actual service manual calls again for taking that off and for quite you know I think three hours or something like that uh, I probably did this in about 30 minutes or so um, I did use electric ratchet on the motor mounts and uh, that flexible open end or box end is going to be a lifesaver on that main cable if you have one of those or even just go to Harbor Freight and buy a cheap set it'd be worth it just for this job alone um, otherwise uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, there's not uh, a whole lot more to it other than what I showed you just remember to take your battery loose and then put it back on and uh, again if you're not sure where the battery's at on these particular cars I have a video where I go over that and I'll put a link to that in the description uh, but that's pretty much it for a starter on these 3.6 V6 Chryslers. Um, I wasn't sure. I've done a few of these on the Grand Caravan and stuff, and it didn't remove the exhaust. And I was hoping it was the case on this. And I guess they just say that because it's easier 
less steps to go through on the service manual or whatever, but uh, by the time you would get the exhaust off and the O2 sensors and all that, uh, I'd already have this the starter replaced and back on the road, so I don't think that's the way to go with it. Um, but anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, one thing I will point out, uh, finishing up this motor mount, is I did have to use a block of wood and a jack to uh, jack the engine up, only about an inch or so, just to get this uh, motor mount lined back up with, two, with the two holes down here and the middle hole there. So you may have to do, you'll probably have to do that, just jack it up a hair, uh, and then it should all line up. And, you know, just start everything loosely, and once you get all the bolts started loosely, then you can go ahead and torque them down. So that's all done. So now all we got to do is put the battery back on and uh, see if.